Of all the fascist forces occupying the former Soviet nation, perhaps the most underlooked have been the Finns. These opportunistic traitors have joined Hitler's invasion of our motherland, thus breaking the Treaty of Moscow. To many who were already worried enough about the German bombings after the West Russian War, and to foreign observers, these occupiers were merely a minor inconvenience, or at best a trading partner. But not to Tukhashevsky. After all, he was the commander of Pliesetsk military okrug. He was the shield of the front that faced the Finnish beast and its little puppets in Onega, a group of treacherous Russians that have discarded their names, nationalities and their devotion to the Soviet cause, just so they could serve their Finnish masters. But now that the front re-established itself as a major power in Russia, Tukhachevsky and all the generals of the front knew that the time was right. Despite the fact that the Red Army still hasn't reached the numbers it had before 1941, its professionalism and skill have far surpassed those of all West Russian warlords, and possibly the Finnish army too. However, the only way Onega would be brought under the rightful flag of the VRRF would be through force. And so, the northern frontier will burn once more. And hello everyone, it is I, Comrade Ivan, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the New Order, Last Days of Europe. Now, I know it's been a long time, and I know Gorbachev and the Queen of England are dead, however, I'm not on the other hand, yet. However, I was gone for about two months already, and there is a good explanation. My PC, or more specifically my graphics card, kinda broke somewhere mid-July, and then only until like a week ago I got my PC back and haven't really had a chance to record since, you know, school. However, we are once again back with our Tuhashevsky series. And in the last part, which was also the first one, we have reunited the West Russian Revolutionary Front. And now it is time that we take Onega and of course Karelia, because you can't have the Soviet Union without Karelia. And of course to humiliate the Finns. So yeah, many warlords can, if they unite West Russia, negotiate over Nega. However, I find it much easier and probably because Tukhachevsky is not really a person to negotiate with the, the invaders and occupiers of the Russian land, we're just going to invade them. And now that Onega is effectively dead, what is my main goal is to take uh, major cities in Finland fast and to overrun their military, since I think I have more units than them, but I'm not really counting on that. Because um, you can see that supply issues here are quite severe, and probably because also Finns did some bombings, which I cannot really stop since my air force is not all that well and I don't have enough production lines to really focus that much on the air force. However, with this we have unlocked two new focuses, reclaim what is ours, which I will do, but first we shall hang the collaborators and thus secure Onyega for ourselves and also integrate it. And yeah, now only thing that remains is capitulating Finland, which Boy, it's gonna be a challenge. Alright, so, so far we have faced very little to no Finnish opposition. 
However, as you can see, they are arriving on the front line and I'm having a bit of a supply issue. Mostly because this war was already hard enough, you know, in TNO before No Step Back. And now it's just absolutely atrocious. Like, holy fucking shit, they couldn't make this more shitty. But, oh well, my main plan is to push from the south, cause I have less forces there, however, I'm really hoping that they can break through.
So, this might look chaotic a bit, considering I got three of my divisions encircled. However, I think I'm winning, considering I have 21k losses, they have 57k losses. We hold most of their territory, I guess. And I'm in process of, you know, getting these divisions out right now. Uh, so, yeah. It is, I think, going good, but uh, damn, I just really can't make a proper fucking encirclement. And would you look at that, they have offered unconditional surrender, considering that we have taken Murmansk and, well, most importantly, v Vipuri, or as I think it's called now, Vyaborg, and, of course, Helsinki. And uh, it will cease all hostilities and return borders to the 1936 position. Yeah, that is good, although I would like to take, you know, Karelia, but kinda makes sense considering that uh, we would be close to Sankt Petersburg and I don't think Heldorf is really keen on, you know, letting us be right on his border, even though we are, but oh well, it's a victory nonetheless. And there we go, here is the news event about our victory, which I'm going to read later. But right now, the borders have returned to, you know, 1936, even though we have gained Petsamo for some reason, but hey, I'm not the one to complain. Also, the city Murmansk has been renamed back to Murmansk from, I think, Murmani, which is in Finnish. And now what is going to follow is expulsion of all the Finnish and Karelian colonizers of these lands that they were occupying previously and that are now under our rightful control. And we have also unlocked the last focus in this expanded focus tree of conquests, Invincible and the Legendary. And after completing the focus called Invincible and Legendary, we gain an event that is also called Invincible and Legendary, which I'm gonna read in a bit. And, you know, this is the end of the video, and I can already hear you guys saying that it is short, but I kinda really don't have time right now due to, you know, IRL stuff, first and foremost school, and also since I wanted to make this video to, you know, continue the series, show you guys that I'm still alive and that the channel is not dead even though I have been inactive for two months, and, you know, to first and foremost beat up the Finns and continue the series. But yeah, you can already see that uh, what's going to be in the next episode, which is going to be longer than this one, and all the other episodes that follow. But for now, I really hope you guys have enjoyed, be prepared for more, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye. Contemporary decades have, in the past, held nothing but despair. The Russian people, so long under siege, were cast adrift. Like a dreidel poised on table's edge, they have toyed with total oblivion. However, through it all, a scant hope has lingered, casting its rare light through the thick, dark clouds. Be it an extra ration, a scavenged vehicle, or an unusually quiet sky, the people have found solace in little victories for far too long. Today, however, for the first time since the 50s, the clouds have parted, sunlight pours through and the people bask in its glow. The Grand Marshal, long chafing under superiors, incompetence and opportunists, finds himself validated. Through our dedication to the cause and innovative theoretical doctrines, we have reigned supreme. Today, we take the first steps towards healing. West Russia is one, invincible and ready to advance boldly. The wind is strong against the Grand Marshal's back, and under his legendary stewardship, we shall not falter. Krasnaya Armia, Siech Silnyei.